From the East Coast to the West Coast, we are everywhere true crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work we will continue to fight for these victims and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the coffee club. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. And more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you. God bless America. And more importantly, God bless our victims. Well, what is up, my beautiful people out there in YouTube and X world? It is nice to see you this evening. Our beautiful Pebbles, the first to say hey. It's nice to see everybody, Sonia, Pebbles, uh, Bookworm. It's nice to see you, hun. I just push, pushed my thing all the way up and now I can't see anybody. <laughs> Oops. Seriously innocent, aren't we all? <laughs> nice to see you, Jazzy, MJ, Blessed Mama, Jess, Dylan. It's nice to see you, Darlene, KB, or Kathy B. It's nice to see you, Radmilla. It's nice to have you. Good evening, good evening. Angel, it's nice to see you, my love. Jody, good evening. Ooh, look who we have. I'm a little a little starstruck. We got some pin tin tin up in the house. Well, hello, my love. Hello. It's nice to see you. Just Deb is in the house. It's nice to see you, babe. I saw you this morning too. Don't think I I I, I got my eye on you. Angie, it's nice to see you. Tippy Toe, I spy up in the house. Sadie X, it's nice to see you. Who else do we have? Pebbles reminding everybody, don't forget to hit that like button. Stacy, Jody, it's nice to see you. Kathy, is it Taryn? I like, I like how you spell that. It's nice to see you as well. Peas in a pod. Well, hello, 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 hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. So, guys, we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. So, the kind of the topic of this conversation, I'm going to I'm going to play two videos for you. One's going to be a little bit longer, and one's going to be a little bit shorter. And I want you to pay attention to the behavior, not necessarily the words. We want to listen to the words too. We want to listen to the words. For those that are just coming in, we are covering the, the case of Sebastian Rogers. He is a 15-year-old boy. He's an autistic boy, high-functioning autistic boy that um, disappeared from his home February 26th, according to his parents. Well, you know, we've been saying for a little minute now that we feel there's something stinking to high heavens with the Proudfoots. Now, we've listened to the um, behavior panel. We've listened to all the talking heads. We listened to the duty rons. We listened to all of the people in the mix. Right. A lot of people. Say, and these parents are demonstrating the, the kinds of behaviors they want that they need in an innocent person. We're saying, I don't know who you're looking at. I have no clue who you're looking at. But the people you're looking at and the people that we here over in the true crime community are looking at, we got problems, okay? I don't know about you, but we got problems over here. There's problems in the neighborhood, right? Why is that? Because we felt that the parents were hiding something. We felt that early on. We were, you know, of course, social media gets blamed for every horrible thing that happens in the world anymore. So naturally, we're like, okay, well, we'll just keep talking till they catch up. 
Well, sounds like a lot of them are starting to catch up. Um, or at least be, you know, known. Because a lot of them are relying on what the law enforcement say. We don't look at law enforcement. We don't listen to what they what comes out of here. We look at what comes out of here, right? We're looking at their behaviors. So I want you to look at the sheriff's behavior in this very, very recent, like, I think day one or day two of the ground search. I think it's very important that you see his demeanor and his behavior and how he speaks and, and just how he's a little loose he's happy to share information he's happy to tell you everything you need to know this is going to be the longer one then we're going to go over to the much shorter one okay and i want you guys to to check this out the best thing the public can do to help us is keep sharing it on social media if you see something say something call the summer county emergency communication center at 615-451-3838 and check your home surveillance video just check. If you see something, call us. We'll come out and look. Um, I think that that's going to be what breaks the case is somebody's home surveillance video seeing something. And at what point are people going to be you know, the They absolutely are. Um, Sumner County is the greatest place on earth. I truly believe that. We have the absolute greatest citizens here but we also have the best law enforcement relationships in the county we we've got people from across the state here the tbi city Howard patrol hendersonville senior gallatin sent people we have plenty of first responders so my my urge to the public right now would be to check your home videos and stay rested because when the call comes we'll put it out on social media and that's when we'll lead you to come uh, and then In the meantime, um, is when you approach this, um, when you approach this search, is it different looking for a child than an adult? Uh, it's definitely different looking for a child with autism. Yesterday, we consulted with uh, someone in the first responder world who does emergency management, who also has children who are autistic, uh, and she kind of laid it out for us some things that I didn't understand or comprehend at first. Uh, she gave us a lot of tips and tricks. So uh, we've had several calls from people with autistic relatives that have told us, "Hey, have you thought about this?" And listen, there's nothing off the table. I don't care how crazy it sounds. If if it's going to help me find Sebastian, get him home safe to his family, I'm going to do it. And are there, what are some of those considerations that go into looking for a child with autism? Some of the things that he likes, what he's familiar with. We know that Sebastian likes cats. Uh, we were told that his favorite song was Eye of the Tiger. We tried playing that to, to just kind of calm him and let him know we're here to help him. Uh, I, I'm sure that he could see what's going on here and be intimidated. But if he sees this newscast, I want him to know, Sebastian, come out. We're here to help you. We just want to get you home safe. Um, and at this point, have you guys ruled out any indication of that? I won't say that we've ruled out any indication of foul play, but I will say that the family has been nothing but cooperative with us. Um, nothing but cooperative. There, there's, no, there's no indication of foul play at the moment. Okay. No indication of foul play at the moment. You guys see his demeanor. He's upbeat. He's positive. He's he's looking for Sebastian Rogers. They know they're going to find him. They're consulting with all the people that um, can benefit, you know, this search effort that knows about autism, that knows about best practices with autism and lost autistic people. So they're really kind of honing in on his uh, disability in, in preparation of these searches and what have you. So you see a very confident sheriff here that is just wanting to bring Sebastian home and to bring Sebastian home alive. Where is my... I think it's this one. Now I want you to look at uh, Mr. Uh, the Sheriff. I can't remember his name for the life of me. I want you to listen to his his demeanor in this one, okay? And I want you to see the difference. Now this one was just from two weeks ago. Eric Craddock is Chief Deputy Craddock. with the Sumner County Sheriff's Office and heads up the investigation. He sat down for an exclusive one-on-one -on -one to talk about what they do when there are few new leads. I think in the absence of information, what we'll continue to do. So I want you to, when he starts honing in on questions, I want you to see this, the behavior of this sheriff. Do is go back over everything we've already done once, put a, put a fresh set of eyes on it. To that end, Craddock says searchers recently found a pair of glasses, which they are checking to see if they belong to Sebastian. Which they don't. He says the parents continue to fully cooperate. Any evidence of foul play? We have 
not cleared anyone, but we have absolutely no evidence to support foul play. I asked about exclusive home security. Not, not, not the, they've been absolutely 100% cooperative and his heart was going out to them. Much different demeanor here. He's, he's basically saying we don't have anything yet. His, his demeanor has changed toward the parents, not justifying, not coming to their defense like he was in that first video. Let's keep going. Video obtained from the neighborhood the night Sebastian disappeared. You can see two suspicious light sources, which we've circled here in an area behind the teen's home. Since we first aired the video last month, authorities have said... No evidentiary value? It is of no evidentiary value. Can you tell me what those lights are? No. Why? Because the investigation remains ongoing. And so it could play a role down the road depending on developments? We don't know what we don't know. So yes, it could play a role. So many are... So much different demeanor, in my opinion, from when we started this whole entire journey. We had a, uh, a chief, a sheriff, a sheriff that was welcoming of information. Let's finish that. Let's finish that little segment up real quick. Let me go back to it real quick. There's a little more. I want you to hear his heartfelt agony for the Proudfoots. Let's finish it up with that. Many at the very beginning of this, and you just saw his behavior just now. So let's get back to that. We've had several tips. Uh, one of the tips was that he was sighted off of Newman's Trail off Long Hall Pike. We actually, when we got that tip, we sent a team oh, out. We made you, contact huh? with who they thought was Sebastian, and it was not. Uh, again, that's a great tip. They thought it was Sebastian because this is where we kind of accidentally recirculate information that we've already discussed. The person that's been walking all these sightings of Sebastian we're now hearing about early on in the case because now the audios of all this is being released. They're going back to these things. They've already been cleared. So thank you, Turtle Gang. I love your face, too. I love your face, too. It could have been. So if somebody sees something, call us. Let us know. And do you guys know, I know you guys were checking shoes last night to see if he was barefoot. Is that still the case? Is he barefoot? Because I know on Facebook somebody posted a picture of these could be his shoes. Um, or is that still the case? Or is he barefoot? What I can say is that his mom says all of his shoes are counted for at the house. Okay, so now we're getting down to the shoes. I wanted to talk to you guys about, before we open up, do I have one more? I think I might have one more thing. No, I think that's it. I do have a couple other things, but we'll get to those once we open up the phone lines and we start talking about stuff. Um, but the one thing that I have to say about whether or not Sebastian Rogers came home. Many people, a lot of people believe, it, it, a lot of people believe a lot of different things, but there are, there is a large group of people that truly believe that Sebastian Rogers never made it back to the house. I disagree with that for several reasons. And here's the reasonings that I have. It still may not make sense to you. I'm not getting you guys off the fence of your own opinion. You gotta make the facts up that, that resonate with you and what you believe. But for me, there's a few things that I remember. One is we have corroborated by from the neighbor that law enforcement does have video surveillance. This was done way, this is before this turned into what it is today. This was back when it, Sebastian, when everybody truly thought Sebastian was missing. And the neighbor, when the law enforcement came to pick up their surveillance photo, they were talking with this lady and her husband and had acknowledged having a videotape of Sebastian taking out the trash, which had to have been the, the one um, person across the street. So that came from the law enforcement. Um, so it, it and, I, and I believe there is an audio tape of that conversation somewhere because I remember hearing something with law enforcement in the background. So there is that. And then the other thing is, is his shoes. His shoes are all accounted for. If, if his shoes are at home, it would imply that he made it home because if he had never made it home, nobody would think to take off the shoes. 
So I, 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 those are the reasons why I do believe it kind of solidifies in my mind, maybe not yours, but at least in my mind, that I feel strong enough that he did make it back home before whatever happened to him happened. The one problem I have, and I didn't even think of it until um, uh, Jennifer Coffendaffer. You guys know who Jennifer Coffendaffer is? She's a retired FBI agent. She trained people, uh, trained FBI agents, and um, she's really a, a good source of information, especially, you know, she doesn't really tell a whole lot of FBI techniques, but she has her experiences. And so not that every single one of her experiences are, are you know, hold water because, you know, their experiences from another case or something like that. And that particular case went this way. And, you know, each case kind of goes their own own way sometimes. And, and while one thing may true, even though it's true, may not apply in this case and be completely opposite of what her analysis is. So it does happen, but she's still a great resource for information, period. And her experience, I love hearing her experience. I don't, I, I don't take take stock 100% and 100%. We're all human. We all make mistakes. And statistics are just that. They're statistics. They're based upon the law of large numbers. They're percentages. There's still a segment, a, a smaller percentage of, of other options. So I know that. But one of the things that she had, had stated in, in this live she's now on youtube she's she has a grow, uh, a following she's growing her following i hope everybody goes over there and and subs it up i can't remember what the name of her um her channel is hold on one second let me go and i'll i'll throw her in the chat give me just a second maybe we'll listen to a little bit but i i, I found it very interesting but she talks when she went when she went through all of this. She actually talked. Um, here we go. Ah, oh, let me go into hers. She actually talked and hit on a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about. All the stuff that concerns us about this case. She really did go and hit on those. And this was in her latest um, live, and the live is labeled. Sebastian Rogers, more concerned than ever. The one thing I don't like is like, you know, once again, without really looking into the Uvalde Foundation, um, she's <clears throat> she's talking about how they got into the search. I don't know. Here's the video right here. I hope you guys go watch it. But she said a bunch of stuff. And one of the things that she, I think we all kind of agree with is these shoes. These, these shoes are, are an issue. Um, for m more than just whether he came home that night. I think the shoes are a great indicator that he didn't willingly walk out of the home. I think the shoes hold more value than many people are giving the shoes credit for. Because we have learned from his, from everybody, from his mother, his stepfather, and his, his, his biological father. The kid did not like going out of the house without shoes, period. So what makes us think this autistic kid just is no longer autistic this one evening? Right? It doesn't make sense. I think the shoes tell us that he came home that night, and I think the shoes tell us that he did not leave that house willingly. I think those are what the shoes tell us. But Jennifer Coffendaffer, uh, Coffendaffer, sorry, excuse me, um, this whole Sebastian Rogers live stream she did about nine hours ago, I really recommend everybody going and watching it, uh, leaving her a comment, you know, telling her, your, her, you her perspective. Uh, but for the time being, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the phones. I'm going to continue talking. Uh, but if you guys would like to call in for any reason, if you'd like to express what you think is going on. Do you, I mean, if you don't think Chris and Katie are... are innocent or, or guilty why you know why wh what would make you come to that and and please, please don't come here and just if you're gonna be uh, again for or against them just don't just don't come here with with not, I mean there's you could say it's because I feel that way if you truly just feel that way but if you have a reason you feel that way express that reason into words because I think it, it you'll find out that a lot of people may share or express some of your uh reasonings 
I find people on here all the time that are for or against, but most people under, you know, they have their own reasoning for that. Can everybody hear the phone ringing? This is Betty. Hello? Hi, Betty. Hi. This Who's is this Glenda. From me. Glenda? I'm, I'm Glenda, and I'm from, yeah, and I'm from Michigan. Well, hi, Glenda. How are you doing this evening? Well, I'm doing pretty good, Betty. I wanted to give you my theory, and I want to tell you that I've reached out to three men on YouTube that's a theory, but because they have their own, they're very not looking at my opinion seriously. Okay. Well, but, what's, but, what's your opinion on this? And let's see what we can what okay. You have. Okay. First of all, uh, marriage is in trouble. I believe marriage is in trouble because of Seth. I mean, because of Sebastian. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why. Maybe it was a little abuse. Maybe because he is older. He's not seven, eight years old anymore, and he's standing up. Okay, so I also think that the Nina is, the ex-wife is very much involved in this because I think that she knows that... Uh, They've been after her child for seven years. And I think that uh, Chris's mom has been so adamant about having this grandchild. And you have to remember, custody battles get very nasty. Uh, look, we just saw that in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, it went down. I believe that, that Chris's mom has been after him about him having Sebastian, not having his own grandchild. And this has been a contentious between him and Katie. And I believe that Sebastian did not come home from that restaurant. He just got new meds. I believe she took him out for the day she, along the way and food or drink. She's given him extra meds. By the time she got him in the car, he was tired. I believe she met Chris. You have to remember that Chris's mom is a realtor. And they have money, so I'm sure that they own other properties. Maybe they own property between Hendersonville and Memphis or somewhere in that area. It's very secluded down there. You've been on those country roads. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Knoxville. I grew up in Knoxville, so I know too. But anyway, I believe that uh, he has handed that child off to somebody. I think that uh, that's what Katie agreed to. I don't believe the child is dead. I don't think she would have went that far. But I guess my agree. question always comes back to Seth was about to take him. So if they I didn't know, want maybe, him in their life, why okay. would they go through all of this? All of this. Okay. okay, because maybe there was abuse. And you know something? I was I was abused when I was a child. So I know that some things you never tell people. You get threatened as a child for telling. So I know that kids hold that stuff. And maybe that was the problem. But I uh, also the abuse believe... with, with who? With um, Chris and Katie or with Seth? Uh, I believe with uh, Seth, at, not Seth. I believe oh, okay, so from the house. Okay, so from the house, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, now this is what I believe too. I believe that Chris's mom or one of the relatives, because all the whole family is involved, I believe that they had planned this. They planned this trip to Alaska, and this is why. His mom drove to Memphis, parked someplace. If you notice where they're parked, they were on the road. There's a big gap in there so they could come out with your trailers. Mm -hmm. He walked out. He took her car. He goes and meets Katie and gets Sebastian. Sebastian's kind of drowsy and drugged up. I believe whenever he got him, the story was taking him, that... Sebastian realized that he was with Chris and that he fought him because he didn't realize where he was at. That I also believe that his mom was on the phone to Katie covering for him, and that would explain the phone call. Hmm. Now, the shoes, because I believe when they put him in whatever vehicle they took him in, they took off his shoes because they knew that if he ran, Chris could take him down. Hmm. Well, it's and definitely... I grandparents, well, the grandparents left and went to Alaska. 
I believe that was supposed to keep them out of the spotlight. So the media's not after them, asking them questions, digging into what's going on with them. Yeah, and, and I do I do appreciate your comments, but I, I mean, I kind of, it, it, it's it's a lot. It's it's um, a lot to unpack. It's, it, it, it is a lot to unpack, I but think at the same time, no one is looking into those parents. They're, oh, I can no guarantee, oh, in, they're getting no looked into looking. very well. They're, I can guarantee everybody. I mean, we've, I can tell you and social no, not, media. Not to Chris and Katie, but to Chris's mom and her husband. Oh, no, they're looking into them. I mean, they've looked, they've, they're, well, they're, they're tearing, okay. they're, they're, enti- they're going through. I mean, they're sleuthing through the, the whole entire family's entire well, life. good deal. Well, good deal. Well, that was just my theory. I've been trying to cover the phone call and the shoes. That's what bothered me the most. Gotcha. And 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 I believe the shoes were taken off so he wouldn't run. That's a and good theory. I mean, that is, you know, we didn't look at that uh, that angle of it. You know, we're looking at him. Well, if somebody's on the phone to Katie in the trailer, then that would cover the three-hour phone call, right? Mm-hmm. He was trip there and back and dropping it, off. No, it would be just one way. It'd be The three and a half would cover one way, not back there and back. Uh, there and back is about but, seven but hours. But have but he would still have time. To, I mean, at 7 o'clock, he could have been there at 7 o'clock to get him. He would still have time to take him someplace. And oh, there's plenty of time. Cause, yeah. Make it back. Yeah. And make it back inside. Yeah. Well, I well, appreciate that was you calling. Theory. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for listening to me. And I, and I hope I'm right that, you know, he's out there and somebody else has got him. And I hope he's not doing him any harm. Right. You know, I I don't think that they wanted any harm to come to him, but I think they gave him away to somebody. I wish I had that same belief, but I my belief is I believe I believe Chris Proudfoot was at home. I think he snapped, and I think he killed the kid. That's exactly what I helped well, I think happened, and well, I think Kitty Proudfoot helped clean it up. Well, you think somewhere in that town that there would be a picture of him someplace coming after him or being at home? Yeah. Yeah, I can't make that make sense that they don't have nothing of him being in that house. Well, All right, we have a great one, and thank you for listening uh-huh, to me. No Enjoy problem. God bless you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. You, God bless you. You're a great boots on the ground investigator. You thank keep you. going. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. This is Betty. Hi, Betty. Yes, hey, how are you doing? I who's, can't... Who's this in, where are you calling from? Hi, uh, I'm Hot Mess Equines in your chat. I'm calling from Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I can't believe I actually got through. You did. <laughs> My first time right, calling. Virginia Yay. Beach. I bet you have beautiful sunrises. Or sunsets. We do. We have beautiful <laughs> sunrises and sunsets. I'm on a 43-acre farm, nice. um, so we're real fortunate. But, um, yeah, I can't believe I got through, so I'm a little bit uh, befuddled here. So um, (laughs) um, the reason why I'm calling is because I have um, a theory that I haven't heard anyone talk about yet. Well, we're ready to hear Um, your theory. What what, what do you think happened? I think that Katie snapped. I think that the full day was just a full busy day. And I think it overstimulated Sebastian. And I suspect something occurred in the evening. And I almost wonder, because of the um, custody battle that uh, they were having with Faith, I think that um, Sebastian may have, you know, gotten smart mouth and said, well, I'm going to tell these things. Mm -hmm. And Katie snapped to protect her husband, which is a sad thing, and then panicked and thought she did something that made him no longer alive, and he wasn't really fully gone. Gotcha. Um, and, you know, and, to be honest with you, I've got a mod that uh, has a similar uh, perspective. Pebbles, Pebbles, can, oh, she's, in the, she's in the chat right now. She has a, a similar perspective. She just feels that... It was Katie, and Katie snapped. She, we, yeah, yeah that's yeah. 100%. Yeah. And I'm, all, and, I'm and kind of I, on the fence because I think one of them snapped, you know, but I don't know which. Right. I just think it's Chris. Right. I don't think Chris had time to get back from where he was. So my additional theory is that 
his mom or sister. Hello? Hello? It would not well, there surprise you are. me. You, you, and... you paused right at mom and sister and you went blank for a second. So what did you yeah, say? I think I think that Chris didn't have time to get back and the three hour phone call is Katie panicking. Mm -hmm. What do I do? And so mom and sister met Katie somewhere in that 45 minute window where she was missing, driving around, quote unquote, mm -hmm. looking for him and then took Sebastian from there. Now, to get real big conspiracy theory on that, I think the trip to Alaska already was planned, and they, you know, that was just a thing that was in, already in motion. And what if they dropped him off somewhere on the way out of town? It's possible. He could be anywhere between here and, you know, wherever they stopped driving and got on a plane. And isn't um, it funny that you just said he could be anywhere? You know who you just reminded me of? Yes, I do. <laughs> Yep. Just, just saying. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep. And then Katie also keeps saying that Sebastian left. We don't know why he left. Mm -hmm. So she is is been continuously not ever has there been an indication of someone took him, right? Mm -hmm. He left, right? And that could also, I think that, you know, criminals make mistakes, right? You never get a perfect crime. So I think they forgot his shoes. I, I, think I do, that, too. I do, too. And not you know, only that, but you know what? Um, a lot of the talking heads, the professionals, keep saying that because they said that he left so many times yeah. that they believe that they must have physically seen him leave. And I'm thinking, yeah, I bet they no did way. probably physically see him leave out the, out a door. <laughs> right. 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 So it's just enough truth for her to pass a lie detector as well. I don't think she, uh, until I see the results, I don't believe none of them. I'm sorry. I don't, been, it, it, you, I don't, I don't <laughs> either, but that's what's been put out there. So I'll accept what I'm, you know, fed right there in Not that, me. you know, I piece even, of the I puzzle. Said, I even said if Chris takes a polygraph and he passes, I'm going to be saying he did yeah. countermeasures. I, I'm telling you, I'm yeah. biased. Yeah. Well, he's a complete narcissist. I think Katie is worse to be brutal. Um, she is not a shrieking violet. I think that she, you know, is is not in a, you know, I'm an abused woman. She's married to a narcissist, mm -hmm. and she, I think she knows it. So the only reason, in my opinion, why he hasn't thrown her under the bus yet, which I believe will happen, he'll protect mama before he protects wife number five. And so he is protecting his own ass because he has knowledge, and his family was actually accomplices or you know what i mean so that's why he's not going well katie did it but it's coming he's going to throw her under the bus and i don't think she'll crack also you know she's got mma training she does have years in, Actually, the, in the military we were hearing that the uh, resume that was going around with the mma training was not that of hers Oh, okay. I don't, I, well, I, I, that's what I, I, I did. I heard about this, um, this, you know, amazing resume she had. And then I had brought mm -hmm. it up and I even said, you know, I haven't seen it personally. And so somebody mm -hmm. had, had wrote me back and said, no, we looked into it and it wasn't the same person. Now, again, I haven't looked at any of it at all. So yeah. I don't know personally one way or another, but I've heard both right. that, 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 that it does yeah. exist, but it wasn't hers. Well, it, Okay, so if we remove that component, still Sebastian had um, a, a medical issue or, or a physical issue that he couldn't get head trauma. Like, that could be very devastating if he did have some sort of, you know, concussion or something like that. So it wouldn't have taken much for her to overreact to him and cause a head injury. Mm -hmm. And then she thinks, I've unalived him, I panic. We can't have this because, first of all, I don't want to admit to it. And then we're in the middle of this, you know, child services and custody battle. So call mama. Mm -hmm. Mama solves all the problems, right, for Chris. Right. Um, so <laughs> I think I it was a group too. involvement. <laughs> yeah, right? I know. I I love your channel. I just found you. Um, and I really like the stuff you're, you're you know, 
supply the information you're supplying to us because it's so convoluted. It is. Um, but there is no way, even the worst mothers in, in the world that I've ever encountered or everyone you talk to, and it's like you don't, first of all, not search for your child, and second of all, you don't leave the house. And I don't know of any. I, I, you know what? I still have not come across it. Only the guilty parents, only the ones that that it right. turn out to be suspect. I have never known a parent that that is missing a child not to go out and search for the child. Like I've watched right. uh, parents that are that are freaking you know fried on drugs right. and alcohol that their child right. didn't come home and out there you know looking and knocking on doors. Yes. yes. I mean, and 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 then the apology tour that they went on through social media you know, is just so, so glaringly guilty, in my opinion, um, that, and it's scripted. Every time you see them speak, it is the same verbiage and phraseology over and over Oh, except the updates. Again. Don't don't forget the inconsistencies that they have to fix when whenever they realize right. they got caught in lies. they got to fix those in those, those interviews as well. Yeah, and, and to viciously go after Seth in the Facebook post also I thought was very telling. Mm -hmm. um, Katie's a viper. She's, she's, um, it, but it, it was never about her missing child either. Mm -hmm. It was just so vicious. And I, I don't think that she was going to allow Seth to have him also. Uh, you know, that's another part of the, the mm -hmm. puzzle that I just think is extremely odd. She didn't, I think she wanted to live just like she's been living, you know, having picnics at the RV with the hubby. She comes back looking tan and thin and like she's been in a spa. Your kid's missing. Yeah. You should be, you should look like hell. Well, and, I mean, and our first clue was when they couldn't go out searching for their son, but yet they have time to go to a barbecue joint to eat barbecue. So that was, right. that, that, that right there, that I was, that pushed me over the edge with them. That's when they went, they went from, you know, being, you know, I mean, just not understanding the situation to be full fledged. But I wanted to tell you, thank you so much for calling. I've got it. Yes. I've got an out of the country caller calling in and I want to grab it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Uh -huh. God, God bless. This is Betty. How can I help you? Hello. This is Betty. Hello. It sounds like you're calling from a really far place away. I wanted to make sure I got answered your phone. This is Betty, Bullhorn Betty Channel. Yeah, I'm calling from the UK. Well, it's so great to have you. I'm just trying to turn. Ah, that's better. There you <laughs> I'm go. Trying to pause it. Um, yes, I've been following this story from the very beginning. I'm actually in the UK, so um, my opinion. The parents, um, Chris and Katie, um, they're one hundred percent guilty of something. One hundred percent. I mean, you can't. I don't think you could. I don't see how anyone would um, be seeing it any different. To be honest. If and this was your child, would you be sitting at home? No. Um, I have a daughter who's sixteen. She has autism. And um, my empathy for her is so much more because uh, she has a lot more struggles. And um, also, if this was to happen here where I'm living, um, the parents would be arrested and they wouldn't be allowed free until they said what happened. Because, I mean, you don't just lose, a child doesn't just disappear. It just it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Right. It can't happen. What do you and, think about um, the shoes? The shoes that are there, do you have any opinion on the shoes? I, just, I, I find it quite strange that she said that, to be honest. It's something that she noticed. And maybe, I guess, you would look to see if their shoes were there. But it, in all honesty, there would have been a sense if he had left their foot. There would have been, surely. And have they even checked their house because i've never heard that their house has been searched well the house has been uh, i call it a surface search it's it, when i when i mean what i mean by surface search is they may have some type of dog go in there or something like that but i mean as far as deep forensic searching it doesn't sound like that's been done inside the house or inside any vehicle or any item that they own personally 
I don't that's, think that that's happened. That's madness. And you wouldn't pack up and leave if your child's missing. Your heart wouldn't be able to do that, surely. They can't. I just... And that's the biggest red flag for me. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest red flag. And that's what I don't get why they're not being investigated because of that. And just something's not quite right with, I mean, we call, I don't, we call it the police <laughs> round here. <laughs> right. I'm actually from a little, a little tiny village in Somerset, England. Um, and if I'm honest, there's no, not really any crime here. Well, that's nice. Ooh. I wish. Oh no, I think, oh, her phone call ended. I'm sorry. Well, thank you so much. It just, it just dropped. It just dropped. I'm so sorry about that. Um, but I do want to thank you, whoever that was from the UK. Thank you so very much for calling in. That was uh, really good. I did have a couple of questions, but <laughs> I didn't get to ask them. So maybe next time. Thank you so much. This is, this is Betty. Hello, this is Betty. Betty, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Who's this and where are you calling from? It's Katie from Arizona. Well, it's nice to hear from you, Katie from Arizona. What do you have to say about the whole Sebastian Rogers case? What do you believe is going on here? A lot, my dear. I've been following this case since the beginning. I have read every chat room. I have followed every YouTuber person. And there's just a lot of stuff that does not make sense. But I have a question. Did anybody look into her supposed boyfriend? Now, that wouldn't just come out of the blue. She has a boyfriend. And this guy moved from California to Tennessee. And he actually only lives a mile from her. Now, there were some investigations by the neighbors in the area. And this guy's pedophile, but well, he's friends with the bad. No, this is the issue I have with that. Is we did kind of look into that, and and neighbors yeah. were asked from people that I trust to give me, you know, the good information. And every person that had had indicated that they spoke to a neighbor or asked them about a neighbor, including a neighbor that lived across the street, said they've never seen anything her acting in any concert with any guy let alone coming to her house hmm. so that's that's so, the only i mean that's just from you know i don't have that's just the information i've received i don't but i don't you know i yeah, have no way of verifying it you know, outside of it being people that i do trust yeah because they posted his facebook profile page on on uh the whatchamacallit too mm-hmm. Yeah, but posting a so, Facebook anyway. page, but I mean, did they have any photos of, of him and her together on that Facebook page or anything that kind of, because everything I... No, I, because as soon as he was called out on the the page, he actually took it down. Okay, so yeah. Which but, was kind of weird, and, but I remember his name, so it was kind of weird, and I went back and checked name? every Do now and then. giving me his name? I'll look into some stuff. James Lyon, L-Y-O-N. Okay. He moved from San Jose, California to Tennessee. And they did a background check on him and they looked on him. Uh, some people that live in uh, uh, Hendersonville mm-hmm. and they were talking about it on the, on the group, the, the chat. So I was kind of curious about that. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you gave me his name. I will definitely look into it. So um, I, I... And that night that Sebastian went missing, the neighbors were talking about how it's unordinary for her to have her garage light on. And they said that night that that light on was on almost all night long, off and on, off and on, off and on. Yeah, when, when I first saw the light source video without, you know, unobstructed, without any overlays or anything on, when I first saw I that light, one of the lights, light. it, it t- at that, the first thing I said is, are we sure that's not a floodlight? Yeah, because if you remember, Chris had said when he was asked on this, Grace, do they have lights on the house? Mm-hmm. And he says, yeah, we do in the back, not the front. Right. So when I saw that, too, and then I watched another uh, person, uh, they were doing some overlays on it and trying to figure out what it was and everything. 
and it actually does look like floodlights from their house, from the backyard. It, it did, at least for that brief second. I saw it look like it came on and came, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I do think that there's yeah. more going on there, but I think law enforcement is limiting that from us so much because I truly believe we're in a criminal investigation, y'all. I don't care whether they've said it or not. Did you, did you see that... Um, the 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 PI for Seth had uh, requested information to file on on the Sebastian Rogers case, oh, no. and the the clerk with the clerk said that um, she couldn't they couldn't provide the information because it was a criminal investigation. Now it was looked into more extensively, and that was actually a mistake, quote unquote that it was a criminal investigation. Now, JLR did some more looking into the statutes on that as far as providing information, because he gets information all the time, you know, he requests it and stuff. Well, it just so happens that the only way that they can't release information to you per Tennessee law is if it is a criminal investigation. So somebody's hiding something somewhere and they don't want it to come out. Yeah. That it is actually a criminal investigation. I believe it's been a criminal investigation since February 26th mm -hmm. or February 27th. That's when the endangered child alert came out. And then it, if that yep. didn't get a criminal investigation, by the time that they released that Amber Alert, they were in criminal investigation mode. Right. You know, I have I have six grandkids, and I watch them every single day. And me and my my daughter agreed that we would not let anybody watch them. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you this. If it was one of my kids missing and grandkids missing, I wouldn't be my ass in some other state with with my husband or whatever. I tell my husband, you want to go, you go. I'm staying right here. Amen. And I'm going to look for him. Amen. And if you don't like that, then you just get on walking down the road, boy. Yeah. You know, that's the way I feel about it because this mom, it, she lucky I don't live in Tennessee. I got relatives, but I don't live there because... I would be right out there searching, and if she ever came across my path, I'd have some words for her. Hell, they'd probably have to arrest me. But I just don't think it's okay what's going on, what's going on. And I think that something happened, and she had did it. Chris is covering up for her. And the reason she acts the way she does is because he has this over her head. Now, come on. She's an ex-MMA fighter. She's hey, we're still, and we're she's still act getting, all shy and stuff. Yeah, we're nah. still getting some information on whether that's uh, valid or not. I'm, we're digging, and I'm going to be going out there. I should be leaving sometime tomorrow uh, to head out sweet. to Tennessee. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So. Okay, sweetie, I love your channel. Thank it was you. nice talking to you. That's just stuff I threw out there. And if I come across anything else, I will definitely call you in and let you know. I appreciate it. God bless. But do do check out JLR's um, um, thing, and and you will see what he had said about this um, this PI and the, and the request for the information. It's on his his channel. Will it do. was on this morning. All right, love you, honey. Bye. Love you too. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love. Wow, the phones are just blowing up. This is Betty. Hey Betty. Hello. Hello. <laughs> This is Linda Lou. Well, hello, my beautiful Linda Lou. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. Oh, it's so was sweet to hear your voice. You may, you, you, you must have the lucky fingers. You seem to make it through. <laughs> I, I got your name in. I uh, touch red dial all the time, trying to get you to get through. There you go. People are saying that they uh, believe somebody has just taken him away from the house, like uh, Chris's um, parents or somebody. What is the reason of just taking him away? I mean, him being alive. I, I know that's been always Take my. Con I never want to discredit you or just you know miss somebody's concern. But my yeah. my question's always been, you know, the why factor's not there. If they wanted to get rid of him, Seth was going to take him. If it was mm. so that he couldn't, I mean, they, they, he couldn't go and you know be a witness in the lawsuit. He's got a a, a, a disability that his mom could have prevented him through a court order from having to testify or be a part of that just by his disability alone. So those yeah. factors for me just aren't, they don't hold water for me. No, I don't either because, I mean, Seth was wanting him. I mean, he was going to, after school was out this year, he was moving in with Seth. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that, uh, or taking him to these uh, camps, uh, behavior camps and stuff like that, I don't, I mean, 
a mother wouldn't let her that, kids leave the state s- with me not knowing where that child is going to be at. Right, but Linda Lou, if they were going to take him to one of those camps and stuff, he's alive. They could just tell the officers, look, he, we, yeah. t- we sent him to the school. He's he, Go to the school. He's fine. I mean, we just put him yeah. in a school. We put him in a school, a special school for his disabilities. You know, mm-hmm. all they need to do is locate him and make sure he's safe. Once they make sure he's safe, he's, he's gone. But the parents can't produce him. Yes, I'm like Pebbles. I believe she might have, you can get alcohol at the Texas Roadhouse. Mm-hmm. And I believe she could have had some drinks there before she got home. And maybe Sebastian was just a little uh, overactive since he'd been out all day, mm-hmm. all wired up. And maybe she might wanted him to do something. He didn't want to do it right then. And she probably just got her temper away from her. Yeah. And maybe pushed him or some way. And he could have hit his head on the wall or something. And then she realized what had happened. But... Uh, I don't, but Mom, I just don't believe they'd take him off, because there's no clothes missing. There's no, there, I don't even know, yeah. nobody can, can, can tell us, but I don't think law enforcement will tell us for a significant amount of time, but nobody's telling us whether yeah. they even collected the clothes he was wearing the night, because mm-hmm. Katie has said that he changed clothes, so where's the original clothes? Yeah, he was wanting to find out where the clothes was that he was wearing at Texas Roadhouse to mm-hmm. see if he did return back home that night. Right. And it was said that uh, Chris said, well, we washed them. I said, still produce those clothes. Why would they wash them if he disappeared the very next day? day like i would leave everything mm-hmm. where it was just in case yeah it and throw the man over not to wash while i'm talking on the phone mm-hmm. with chris you mm-hmm. know oh you mean while she was studying for school too and reading a book yeah. while she was talking <laughs> and washing clothes man, I, I wish i have had the the, the multitasking gifts uh, Miss Katie proudfoot have you know if i oh, had those wow. multi my house would probably be a lot cleaner than it is <laughs> But Just she saying. could tell in those, uh, when she was in the beer and uh, in, uh, had the interview with uh, Nancy Grace, mm-hmm. her expression on her face, she looks like she had, was drained of everything. The way she looked, how she looked, her eyes, I mean, looked like she was under some kind of uh, uh, condemnation of what I had done and thinking, mm-hmm. what have I done? I don't understand why people just keep going. It's like at some point, just realize that the gig is up. I mean, why does it have to be so draining? Why don't you just realize you ain't getting away with this? Why make it more difficult on yourself? Yeah, and leaving then and going out out of this, out of Hendersonville and not there, I'd say I'm going to sit right here on the porch until he comes home, mm-hmm. until I find out. I mean, if he's missing. But I, they said, why why get out there and look for him? Why get in them searches when you know in your heart that he's not going to come back and he's not out there? Yeah, and that's well, surely how they acted. Him. And I really think that they they know they absolutely have to know. So it just doesn't make any yeah. sense. It doesn't make any yeah. sense to me, Linda Lou. Well, Betty, honey, I'll let you go. All I right, thought honey. I'd check with you, and you have a great day. You a good too. weekend, too. I a good love weekend. you. Take care. I love God you, bless. too, honey. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> our beautiful Linda Lou. Our beautiful, beautiful Linda Lou. God bless her. God bless her. I love her little spunk. I love her spunk. This is Betty. Hi, buddy. It's Kristen from Michigan. How are you? Well, hello, my beautiful Kristen from Michigan. How are you doing, love? I'm blessed. I uh, This was my second time calling, and um, I've gotten right through, so I feel very blessed right now. You you and Linda Lou must have the, 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 the magic touch. <laughs> I wish my magic touch could get Sebastian Rogers home. I have slept and ate weeks or however long it is 54 days and of course it's not my baby but I just I can't imagine what Katie is thinking at this point I like the one lady said it's a snowball effect and it's just so big now where what's 
do you, do you think he's alive? Like, I want to ask her, like, do you really think he's alive? In the back of your mind. In my, in my, everybody, yeah, 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 I have, I hope, I pray to God we have a miracle and I'm absolutely wrong. I absolutely hope to God that be the case. But if you're asking me for my personal opinion, no, I do not think this boy is alive at all. And I don't either. And, and, and I was the one that has screamed from the rooftop, I think 15 days in, dead people don't need shoes. I've went on every broadcast. I've went on every show. I am the one that says dead people don't need shoes. Yeah. And it's sad because you know what? I know that like Seth and his family and his side of the family that's been out here beating the pavement that are super emotional about their missing loved one and that can't believe this is happening to them. This is the, these are the parts, the pieces of the family that my heart breaks for. Because here they are, they've been out here searching and scratching their heads and, and, and pushing themselves to the end of the earth to try to find their son. Meanwhile, the people that, that, that were around and responsible for taking care of him sit and cowered out and, and be basement dwellers. I agree. And I feel horrible even saying the most sinister things about this lady. Like, I'm with you. I would love to say, you know what? I was wrong. I was wrong. And I apologize. But the way my life goes, I'm not probably wrong. And if I could just get 20 minutes in a damn interrogation room, I bet you I probably could get out of her. <laughs> well, I, can, I can probably guarantee, you know, I would say I could probably guarantee they don't want to see me. But if I did see them, I would walk up to him like this and I'd talk to him and say, I want to know what happened. Would you guys be willing to talk to me? You know? But, you know, there's, yeah, a, piece, and there's a piece of me that just wants to say, I mean, how, how effing dare you? Like how, how, how dare you lady? Like, like there's, there's a piece of me that wants to listen to why. And there's a piece of me that just wants to condemn this woman. And, and I'm like, it's a give and a take. And it's, it, I gotta tell you, it's hard to figure out what, what would you do? <laughs> well, you know, and that's the thing I, I've tried to do it both ways. Cause I'm a new baby Christian and you know how your heart is supposed to be. Mm -hmm lighter than anything when you get into heaven so i've tried it I've, I've 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 cried i've cried to god you know god i'm so sorry for saying that about your child about katie frog but you know show show us something that will let us see where he's at because at the end of the day sebastian rogers is still missing at the end of the day there is hearts out there that are crying and want to know what happened to this boy and my theory is, is I believe in my heart, I'm with your other moni monitor. I believe that Katie Proudfoot did it. I believe she is another Susan Smith. I believe that um, Chris was her apple of her eye. Mm -hmm. um, and Sebastian kind of got pushed to the side. I believe that um, the case that was coming up is a big factor and why and what happened to him there's always a mo motive and maybe the motive is not money mm -hmm. maybe the motive is just crit might be might be might be well thank you so much for calling i've got enough for one caller left after you so uh thank you for calling well, thanks, in. please Betty. use those magic thumbs to call back again <laughs> all right thank you <laughs> god bless bye-bye god bless <laughs> All right, the lucky caller. Let's see who lucky caller is. And I'm rooting for you. I see you back there trying your hardest to get through. I do see you. I see you. I'm, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. Oh, and it's not you. No. <laughs> this is Betty. Hey, Betty, I got it. You got it. Yeah. You got it. Okay, you got it. So who's this and where are you calling from and what do you got? This is Brenda, your buddy from Wisconsin. Hi, Brenda. It's nice to see you. How are you doing, love bug? How you doing, my love? I am doing well. Have you, I wanted to ask you, hon, have you heard, I was on listening to another person. They said that uh, Chris is, I think it's his uncle, mm -hmm. has a farm in another part of Tennessee, some part of it caught on fire. Have you heard about that? 
no, I have not heard about that. Uh, yeah. Where did you hear about this? I was trying to think of which podcast it was that I was listening to. Okay. But they sure sure did say that hmm. that the that his uncle owned some land. I'm thinking Memphis, but don't hold me to that, okay? But it's somewhere in Tennessee on some land, and it caught on fire. Interesting, interesting. The only thing I heard that caught on fire was that landfill, the one landfill, but I didn't hear of anything else catching on fire. I'll have to look into that. Well, thank you, Brenda, and I hope you're – What? let me just ask you this. Do you think um, – do you think he walked out of the house, or do you think something happened inside the house? That baby didn't walk out of that house, honey. Nah, I don't think that so. That baby didn't walk out of that house. I've cried, and I've prayed to God that he would get to come home to his daddy. I just, I don't, I had a child that was born with a cleft lip and palate. Mm -hmm. And I held that baby through 99 surgeries. Mm -hmm growing up she had her first one at three months old and i just i can't imagine somebody having a child missing and leave it <laughs> there's no i wouldn't even let my husband hit my kids he went to hit cat because she didn't want to go to sleep one night she's about eight eight nine months old mm -hmm. I jumped up out of that bed and grabbed my child. I said, I gave birth to this child, not you. If you ever try to hit my child, I said, not only will you sleep, you will sleep permanently. <laughs> you are, and I meant what I said. You are never to touch my child. Okay. You didn't give her birth. I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're her father. You're a big strong man yeah. you could hurt her she's got problems don't you ever touch my child yeah. none of them he never touched my children he knew i killed him yeah and i you know i wish katie would have stuck up for her son it just seems like it's one of the two that's all i know it's one of the two it doesn't matter which one it is because as far as i'm concerned they yeah. both acted in concert together if if not planned before they definitely were working together after the fact and you can't well, have i one don't know i wasn't there but i've yeah. heard several people say that uh chris was not work that weekend mm -hmm. He was, they said he was not at work this, that weekend. I, don't, I thought he came home. They didn't work that weekend. Mm -hmm. I think he was home, Betty. I honestly, I had from get go, think he was at home that night. Yeah. He may have not went anywhere with them. He may have stayed in the house or he may have been out hiding somewhere, exactly. you know, because he knew what was going to go down. But I don't think he was in uh memphis that weekend i think he was at the house waiting on them yeah i honestly do and i haven't strayed from that you, I honestly you just think brought up something hold on brenda you just brought up something listen to this and i don't uh, I, I was i said you just brought up something listen to this so i was contemplating because we've been talking a lot about you know proof of life what was and it's part of you know the stuff with jennifer coffendaffer you know talking about the proof of life stuff on her newest yeah. um, video that he just she just released nine or ten hours ago, and um, the proof of life that she said was from the video from the the Texas Roadhouse. But listen to this. Remember, Seth only said he saw the video from outside from the parking lot view. I don't know if they ever showed him the the video from inside the restaurant. What was viewed on the inside of the restaurant? Because you know, cameras were inside that restaurant. So yeah, why did nobody view the inside? What what was contained on those inside cameras? And they said that a cousin, uh, all, she didn't say this in the beginning, but like the second or third interview, she she brought in a cousin and a couple of aunts mm -hmm. that went with them. But yet you ain't heard that since, have you? And you just heard the it only that one thing, time. But see, the only thing Seth said was that it was just Katie 
and and Sebastian that walked out of the restaurant. So where were Bingo. the two aunts and the cousin? Exactly. Like I said, baby. Like I said, they just she just mentioned that the first one time, mm-hmm. and she has not mentioned it again. Mm-hmm. That's bullshit. There wasn't nobody there with them. <laughs> I love you, Brenda. You take care and God bless. <laughs> you, hey, baby, I just call it like I see it. <laughs> we appreciate it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. A hen is a hen is a hen. You know, Absolutely. you can't get a rooster out of a hen. Yep, yep, yep. Well, take care and God bless. Love you, baby. Love and you, you have too. a good week, uh-huh. sweetheart. Bye-bye. You be safe. You too. Hey, Bye-bye. get down. You get down there and find that baby. I'm gonna at least clear some areas. I know that. I'm gonna be working my butt off, but I'm 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 up for the challenge. Uh, you saved my number, baby, and if you need anything, give me a call. You got it. God bless. Bye, baby. Bye-bye. All right. Before I'm going to end this, there is one lucky caller that has just beat the pavement trying to get a hold of it. I think I saw her number come up. I, I think it's a female. I don't know. I don't know. But I saw this number pop in literally forever and ever just... The, 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 the one that just didn't give up, right? The one that didn't give up. And I was hoping that this caller would call. And ah, so I'm going to turn all the volume off. I'm going to try to reach out. I don't want to dox anybody. So I'm going to try to reach out to this person and see if they'll pick up the phone because it seemed like they were very eager to get some things off their chest. So just bear with me. I tried. I tried. The lucky caller, I'm so sorry. Maybe another time, maybe you'll be able to get through to the Bullhorn Betty channel. But I did try to call you back. I did try to call you back. If your zip or area code started with a 205, I saw you calling in. Thank you for trying to call in. Danica, I saw you over here. It's nice to see you, love bug. Um, but I did try to call you back. So God bless you for being a trooper and trying to call in here. I want to tell everybody that's here on YouTube as well as X, thank you so much for being here. I'm Bullhorn Buddy, and we have been covering the Sebastian Rogers case, and we will continue to cover the Sebastian Rogers case, and we will continue to open up our phone lines to allow you guys to come over here and express your opinions, your viewpoints, your theories, and your speculation as we uncover this case. This case is not over with yet. There's definitely some changes in our law enforcement partners and our law enforcement social media creators. They are now coming out. They're now getting bitten from the stuff that we were bitten from months ago, or at least a month ago, right? We knew that this stunk, stunk to high heaven. I'm glad to start seeing some of the talking heads, the, the, the legal talking heads starting to come over to this side. I think they're realizing there's something seriously wrong here. And um, you know, now, now that they're on that, that, that mindset, now we can start hearing their experiences and their professional opinions about these aspects, ones that they weren't willing to give us before, I think they're now more receptive to start giving us a little bit of insight um, in their thought process and what they expect to hear, you know, from here on out to come out, you know, in the near future. So I'm going to be paying attention to the Jennifer Coffin Daffers of Twitter and um, YouTube. You know, I'm going to be listening to the Vinnie Politans, uh, Jenny, uh, you know, Twitter and YouTube. So, you know, get if you have not subbed up to them, please sub up to them. There's a lot of great people out there that I highly respect. Nancy Grace, that I highly, highly respect and that, that do explain these things. And uh, Emily Baker, another one. Emily Baker is another one. Uh, Chris, Katie and Chris are in chat. Is that true or is that not true? I don't see any Katie or Chris in my chat. So if Katie and Chris are in my chat and you guys want to come forward, I'm happy to have a conversation with you. 
I'd be surprised if you'd have a conversation with me. I don't bite, but if you. Uh, thanks, everyone. What is it, Harper's Day? Thanks, Betty. Take care, everyone. Katie and Chris. <laughs> uh, Harper, did I tell you late? I just wanted to say I love you. I love you. No, I don't see them in. I don't see them in chat. I don't see them. I don't see why they would want to speak to me. I mean, I, I'll let them up here. I'll be respectful. If you guys know anything about me, um, when I'm looking at these, when people hide from me, I get a little butt hurt. You know, when people want to come and be forthcoming because I feel like I'm I'm a very fair person. I'm a very pointed person. I've got a lot of questions for the Crowdfoots. Um, their their BS is not going to roll over here. But you know what? I can I can tell I can tell somebody you're full of crap and talk to them still respectfully. Because I want them to explain these problems. You know what? I don't think they will talk to me. And I don't think they're going to explain these issues away. Because I believe they lawyered up. I believe the minute that they shut their social media accounts down. Was with the moment that they got an attorney. Because the first thing an attorney is going to tell them to do. Is shut it down. Okay? And that's what happened. Both in the same day. Just like that. Everything shut down. So this idea that they're not lawyered up. I I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Law enforcement ain't talking to us. They're, the last time we heard from them, weeks ago, weeks ago, uh, the family was still being cooperative, so to speak, whatever that means. How cooperative are they? Have they given you a, a good timeline? Have you corroborated their timeline? Can you just tell it? Like, I don't even need to know what's in the timeline, right? I'm not asking you for detailed information of the case, Sheriff or TBI or whoever the hell's running this damn case. Just tell me, just tell me this simple question. Do you have a legitimate timeline and has that timeline been corroborated? Yes or freaking no. Simple. I'm not asking for any detailed information. Nothing that's going to go to the integrity of the investigation. Just tell me if the damn timeline's there and if you have been able to corroborate their timeline. I don't want to know the information in their timeline. Has it been corroborated? That's all I care to know. We'll see if law enforcement gives us at least that much. But I highly doubt it. You want to know why? Because they're tight-lipped. Why? Because this is a criminal investigation! Now that we know! It's time to start teaching people how to think, not what to think. All right, God bless you crazy animals here on YouTube and X. You have a wonderful evening. God bless. Tonight is Friday night, so I'm going to say... Please arrive alive. If you're planning on drinking, have a designated driver or have a tow to go. Do not get behind the wheel of a car while you are intoxicated. Okay? We say, go have fun, kids, but do it responsibly. God bless. As you wake up in the morning... You want to find the latest, greatest information about criminal cases and have an intuitive conversation about the suspects associated with these cases. Head over to the Bullhorn Betty channel on YouTube. Get breaking news right here on the Bullhorn Betty channel. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty Coffee Club. Enjoy your stay and enjoy your day.